right, good afternoon. How is everybody doing? Awesome. My name is Vinny Da Silva, and I'm a developer evangelist with Vuforia. And I'm here to talk to you guys about augmented reality. In the movie The Matrix, the character Neo gains the ability to see the source code of the Matrix itself, the world. And as a result, he could remake the Matrix as he saw fit. While Vuforia won't teach you kung fu, I wish it did, uh, it will help you manipulate virtual content in the real world. Before it provides advanced computer vision, which allows us to have a deep understanding of objects, environments, and therefore the world around us. And it's this advanced computer vision that allows for virtual content to augment objects and environments. So much like Neo can see the source code of the matrix to manipulate it, before its engine can see the world for you and allow you to manipulate the virtual content. So we're at Unite. I'm assuming most of you guys use Unity to create your content. Before is now integrated into Unity. And what that means is that you'll, you'll continue creating your content inside of Unity. And then you'll use Vuforia to put that content into the real world. And because Vuforia is integrated into Unity, as new versions of Unity is released, expect to see um, Vuforia versions alongside it. And when we talk about putting content into the world, we generally think about putting into two different types of places. We place content on objects like books, board games, and toys. And if any of you were at my talk earlier today, that's what we talked about. We can also place content relative to the environment, so on top of a table, on the ground, floating in a room. And that's what we're chatting about today. Most ARKit applications behave this way. So just out of curiosity, how many of you guys in the audience have used ARKit? Pretty good chunk of you. And how many of you guys have used AR Core? Wow, all right, cool, awesome. So let's get into it. So Vufur has been working with this kind of technology of, of environmental detection and of environmental augmentation since 2013. Back then we were using um, depth sensing camera, world facing depth facing cameras to allow us to get <clears throat> a really detailed mesh of the environment. And this detailed geometry allowed us to interact with the environment in all sorts of really interesting ways. But it's only really feasible with this world-facing depth-sensing cameras. And the only devices that really have that is a Tango and a HoloLens. Now, I'm assuming, like most of you guys, what you really want, what you really, really want is this kind of awesome environmental technology on everyday phones. But we can't get that sort of level of resolution, ge geometric resolution, with ordinary cameras. But what we can do is we can do a pretty, pretty good job at finding the ground, planes, tables, things like that. And before 7 allows you to put content on planes, ground, et cetera, using a technology called V4 Ground Plane. Now, there's been huge demand from developers. Everybody's asking us about you know, how can we augment our environments. And we can see this by you know, the keynote. We saw ARKit demos and we saw ARCore demos. And, and these technologies do that really well. And the reason why Vuforia hasn't done this in the past is mostly because we're a cross-platform solution. And it's really hard, really tricky, to get this kind of technology working on the majority of devices on people's pockets. This tech is dependent on calibration. We need really precise timing between camera frames and IMU data. Not to mention there's computational requirements. The CPUs on these phones need to be powerful enough to do this, this kind of computer vision processing. So every, every device, every supported device needs to undergo a, a pretty rigid calibration process for this magic to actually happen. And that's what we're doing with before fusion. There's a ton of fragmentation out there as far as AR enablers go. So we have different sensors, we have different chips, different cameras, and of course now we have AR kit and AR core, right? So there's a lot of things for AR developers to think about. And before is taking care of all that for you. We're creating a platform that allows developers to create augmented reality content in their environments, and we want it to work everywhere. 
So when V4 is running, we determine what kind of enablers are on the hardware, and we leverage them for the best possible augmented reality experience. OK, so what that really means in practicality is that you create a game, and it's an environmental-based game. And then one of your players downloads it on their brand new iPhone X. When they run it, we're going to use ARKit. It's there. It's powerful. It's awesome. We're going we're gonna to use it. But then if another player downs, downloads it on an iPhone 6, where ARKit is not enabled on those, I think those are eight, eight chips, right? We will use our own ground plane technology based on VIO to have the same sort of experience on those phones. Similar thing, somebody downloads the brand spanking new Pixel 8, Pixel, <laughs> Pixel 2, and we then leverage AR core. It's there, it's amazing, it's awesome, right? Well, that's what we should do. But then if somebody downloads it on a Samsung Galaxy S7, we want that same experience. We want that usability to be awesome for our players and our users. So let's dig a little bit more into what I'm talking about as far as the challenges that we have with fragmentation. So currently, what we're seeing here are a couple charts with um, the current uh, V4 ecosystem. We have about 65 models of iOS devices and 40,000 models plus of Android. I'll tell you, I didn't even know there was that many devices out there on Android. I, I certainly didn't. And amazing tech, AR kit, about 36% coverage here. With ground plane, we're, gonna, we're reaching 94% of those devices. AR core, less than 1%. So I think, I think I can literally name off the phones in, in you know, a couple sentences. I think there's like maybe three of them and some variations of them, right? AR core right now, today, is very limited. It will definitely get better, but right now it's very limited. And what we're doing is with our, our rigid um, calibration procedures, we're aiming to get 20 to 30% of coverage of Android devices by release of V4S7. And that's not just phones in the US. We're looking at worldwide, right? So if you are trying to target markets in South America, in Asia, et cetera, uh, we really want to make sure that augmented reality is going to go everywhere. That's our mission. That's our goal. That's what we want. All right, cool. So I'm going to show a quick device demo of our uh, before fusion and ground plane technology. Um, let me switch this over. Thank you. All right. So shortly, here we go, oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, so this is pretty standard AR kit technology that I'm assuming most of you guys are, are pretty, pretty much expecting. So what we're doing here is that we're, we're delivering the same kind of thing through Vuforia. And then much as you expect, through the magic of high production value. <laughs> we're also going to be able to augment our, and if I can keep my hand steady, we're also going to allow you to augment objects via our standard Vuforia um, functionality. All right, so let's, let's kind of go through the workflow of what that would be like inside of Unity today, or what, what will be with Vuforia 7. So here I have a, um, a standard empty scene. Uh, I have preloaded some assets just to help out so that way you guys are not sitting through um, importing of assets. But uh, the first thing that we're going to do is when we're working with Euphoria is that we want to go into our editor, uh, project settings rather, our player settings, and we are gonna, going to enable virtual reality. I mean, sorry, <laughs> Euphoria, augmented reality. Um, OK, so when we enable it here, um, What's going to happen is that it's going to leverage our, the Vuforia uh, engine. And if you installed it with Unity as part of 2017.2, um, it's going to be available there. And if you didn't install the component when you're checking off all those boxes for platforms and components, this will turn into a hyperlink, and then you can download the component from here. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our Vuforia menu. And here you can see all of the different objects that Vuforia can augment. So our image targets, all, all the sort of classic um, object recognition and object uh, augmentation that you expect. I'm going to go ahead and pull, put in an AR camera. And the AR camera, for those of you not familiar with Vuforia, this is going to be our main camera in the scene. And it's also going to service as uh, our uh, camera for the device. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the main camera. OK. And much like our, our sort of workflow today, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and insert a ground plane. And I'm going to go ahead and get a little closer here. And let me move this to the side. So our ground plane here is a representation of your environment. You're going to put your content in the ground plane. And then once you're running it, you have a couple different options of how you deploy your ground plane. By default, excuse me, by default, the ground plane is going to get deployed as you, when you tap on the screen for the first time. You'll obviously have a lot of different ability, a lot of different options to choose how you're going to deploy your content. And then much like a lot of our other things, so we put our, our augmentation on the ground plane, and then we deploy it to the device. And I'm not going to deploy it to iOS, because right now I'm running on a PC, but um, this is the, the flow that you're going to go through. And, and the idea here is that we're trying to make it really easy for, for AR developers to get started, not only deploying content into the environment, but also deploying content onto objects. So you can get started with Vuforia 6.5 today. Our, um, our ground plane technology in Vuforia Fusion is included with Vuforia 7 that we'll be releasing later. We have a lot of samples available in the asset store that's available for you to, for you to uh, play around with. And then now I have some time for, for some Q&A if anybody has any questions. I think we can come up to the, to the mics here. No question. Oh, here we go. Um, so you know how AR Kit introduced some really cool things in terms of like analyzing the ambient lighting in a room, and that adds a lot of realism, especially with like the the ground plane shadows. How does it work with Fusion? Do you kind of tap into all the APIs and all the possible features with AR Kit and AR Core? Yes. Yeah, so um, right now the current build that I have doesn't do that. But the idea is that when we release before 7 we're going to expose all of the major chunks of functionality from both AR Kit and AR Core eventually. OK, cool. And what is the estimated like, release date for 7? So 7, I think, is slated to be released with the next major version of Unity. OK, cool. Thank you. Yep. Um, hi. Um, so the other day, I saw there's a demo downstairs showing the, uh, the not only targeting the plant, but also targeting the 3D model. Yep. Can you also talk about a little bit more about that? Sure, absolutely. So we covered a lot of those kind of object uh, augmentations in the earlier talk this morning. But the, the, the gist of it is that what we can do with um, 3D models is that uh, we can import um, engineering models, solid models, and surface models. Um, through, a, through one of our tools. And then once you do that, and you, and you can pull it into Unity, and you can start to augment um, objects that, you know, that are not sort of like flat or, or image-based, but we, we sort of rely on the geometry to augment those objects. So that will also be available for Vuforia 7. Oh, so it's not available right now yet? It's, it's available in early access. So if you want to get started with it right away, please visit our website and, then, um, and, and get, get onto early access. All right, thanks. Yep. Hey, um, I just kind of wanted a little bit of clarity on the uh, VIO tracking that you had. So that's going to give uh, backward compatibility to devices that don't have AR Core and AR Kit. Yes, that's right. Is there uh, like a rough idea, like some of the limitations or the differences there? Um, I am not sure. So we're we're uh, because of the pr the calibration process that we're going through, and we're getting precise information of sensor data and. Um, uh, the, the camera, et cetera. We're aiming to have the best possible AR experience that we can get out of those devices. Okay. And then uh, just a quick follow up. So that's going to be in uh, before A7? Yes. And then before A7 is likely with uh, 2018 version of Unity, or is that 2017.3 potentially? 
Um, I, I think it's, it, my, my understanding is going to be the next major version of Unity. Okay, thank you. Yep. Hello. So I was wondering, ARKit and ARCore can track multiple planes. Will Euphoria ground planes be able to do that? Yes. Um, we're looking exactly how we're going to expose that for our APIs, but we want to have as much feature parity as possible okay, with, with, those, with those, um, yeah, with ARKit and ARCore. So we're, we're always looking at um, a sort of balance between you know, making it super easy for developers to start using right away. And we're looking at sort of like what are the, what's the major chunks of, like what are the kind of functionality that people want right now? And a lot of it is like, oh, I want to place um, you know, furniture in my room and visualize what it looks like. Or I want to have a game where you know, I spawn a spaceship in my room and I do something with it, right? So we're looking at sort of those use cases. Uh, and we'd love to hear more about what you want to do with your environmental tracking, and then we can take that feedback, and then we can see what we can do about you know making that process better. But we're really um, really committed to making the you know AR really simple to use, no matter you know what platform you're hitting, and we want to make it you know work uh, the best way possible on whatever device. Cool. All right. Any other questions? All right, well, I want to thank you guys so much for your time today. Uh, my name is Vinny Da Silva.